Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to 2024. Uh, today is December, December, see, I'm still back in the dark ages. This is January the 5th, and welcome to the Today's <laughs> Restaurant News Networking Group. Uh, I'm Howard Appel, I'm the founder and publisher of Today's Restaurant News, and I'll be your host today. Uh, we are a group of vendors who are here to help each other grow our businesses and also to help any restaurant with any uh, problems or situations they may have. Uh, feel free to give us a call if you have a situation at 561-620-8888 or go to our website at trnusa.com and uh, give us a call. And if you'd like to attend the meeting, yeah, feel free to give us a call to do that as well. Today we have, uh, I want to call it one and a half new person on the board. We have a returning uh, guest, Baha, who is, well, Baha, why don't you tell us who, what you do? Of course. I just want to say good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. Uh, may this year bring all of our businesses and clients prosperity and success. Uh, my name is Baha Arol. Um, I'm an account director here at the Holmes organization, and we deal with insurance in the commercial line. So anything from, you know, your property insurance to general liability, workers' compensation, um, inland marine, and I specifically specialize in the hospitality industry. So restaurants and hotels are are my game. Um, we deal with restaurants all around Florida and all 50 states. Um, so if there's anyone that you have in mind, we'd be more than happy to take a look. Um, our agency here has been around since 1989, locally founded here in Jacksonville and put together we have over 300 years of insurance experience. So very excited to um, you know meet Gary. I know I did meet you know a bunch of the gang last week. But um, excited for 2024. Great. Well, thank you and welcome back. Thank you. And Gary Gridley is a brand new guest today. So, Gary, why don't you just uh, tell us who you are and what you do? Uh, sure. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Gary Gridley and uh, originally from upstate New York, but lived in Florida half my life. And uh, my background was in uh, food equipment. <laughs> in the commercial kitchen sector for about eight years. And just recently I um, switched jobs and I now work for Spot On uh, Software Solutions, which uh, specializes in POS systems and labor management, uh, just any basically uh, issues that the, the, the restaurants are having. We also do retail and also auto automotive as well. And uh, it's, uh, it's about six years old. Uh, the founders are from Stanford University. Everyone li lives out in San Francisco. They're all software engineers. And uh, it's just been exciting for me to take a turn in the industry where I was always in the kitchen with the chefs and teaching them how to work the equipment and pretty much just walk past the POS systems every time. <laughs> I knew a few of them, but um, we just got voted from NerdWallet, uh, the top POS system in the restaurant industry over Toast, Clover and Square, Aloha and a bunch of others. So I'm really uh, proud to be a member of this new company. And the big thing is we have a lot of support and our reps, you know, we go in, we meet the owners, we meet the restaurants and uh, meet the restauranteurs. And just like you said originally, Howard, if there's any issues, we uh, we like to hear from them. And uh, we have a lot of uh, different platforms that can help uh, have their businesses just peak uh, we do credit card processing as well, and uh, a lot of people don't look at their merchant statements. So we had uh, we dive into that, and some people have no idea they're paying. You know, if, if, if a restaurant's doing you know four hundred thousand a month, you know they're looking at you know probably one hundred and seventy eighty thousand in credit card fees a year, and uh, we help reduce that or actually uh, eradicate it with a different payment program. So. Just excited to uh, be part of uh, this group and uh, look forward to networking with everyone. And uh, we also have a referral program, and I'll talk, I'll tell you guys about later. But if we uh, if it's an ally program that I'm working with Brian now, and any referrals that I get, and you guys help me, and we sign them up, there's anywhere from a one thousand to two thousand dollar referral fee that uh, Spot On gives. So that's pretty ex pretty exciting. That's a nice incentive. Yeah. 
I saw, I saw Chris's eyes light up. <laughs> <laughs> like money from home. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome aboard. Thank you so much. What, what part of that of money, Chris will be able to put up a new cabana on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Book it, Dano. <laughs> what, what part of upstate New York are you from? Um, Schenectady and Niskuna is my township that I grew up in. So I have and a family. You, you and I have an alternate uh, alternate life. To, we're like on the parallel. We're on the same parallel. Uh, I was in a little bit upstate New York and came here and been here for over 30 some odd years. Oh, excellent. What part? Uh, Rockland County. Okay, yep. Absolutely. All right. But yeah. It's kind of weird because when he said upstate New York, I, I kind of, my eyes kind of lit up as well because I, I grew up in um, Rochester, Fairport, New York. So I mean, Schenectady was a you know, three hour drive from us. And I went to school in SUNY Geneseo. I'm not sure if you guys know where that is, but it's a state. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to, Baja, do you want to tell everybody about how cheap your electric was per year? Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> One of my best friends uh, was born and raised in Spencerport, and his wife grew up in Greece. They never met each other. They both went to St. Bonaventure University yeah. and met at, at college. And, you know, now they have five kids and they live in Spencerport now, right on Route 31. But I, I know where I lived there three years and uh, worked with him. and had a painting business years ago. So I love Rochester. It's a great town. It's a great place to raise kids, for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely. Well, we, we spent four long years in Buffalo, New York, in the late Ooh. 70s and early 80s. Yeah, oh. and it was cool. And I had a son who lived in Rochester for for nine years. He just moved back to Florida. He said the taxes up there are killing him. Oh yeah, he got a pay raise, yeah. and, and fifty five percent of his paycheck went to pay taxes and fees. Oh, it's, it's going I'm... nuts. Yeah, the school taxes are, are ridiculous in most of New York. It is. Oh. Uh, yeah, any restaurant watch restaurant or, or a manager watching this. Uh, not only do we have a lot of history geographically, we have a lot of history in the industry. So if there's any issues that you might have, you know, feel free to get in touch with us and we'll try to help you out with it. Uh, Ed, you want to start us off with the uh, intros for? Sure. And, and Gary, I'm going to say we moved here in 82 from Buffalo, New York, had no desire to move elsewhere. <laughs> so, I actually, my, my buddy and I, we had a, a painting business and we, uh, we did all the Raymore and Flanagan furniture stores. So we, and his, his wife's best friend is Jill Kelly, Jim Kelly's wife. They went to college together. So we spent a lot of time in Buffalo. We did Orchard Park, uh, Williamsville, mm -hmm. Amherst, uh, Lockport, like all over Buffalo. We worked and uh, been there many times and okay. Niagara Falls as well. Actually, we, lived, we lived in West Seneca, about a mile and a half from Rich Stadium. Yep. So that's, that's where it was. Yeah. Orchard Park was the store that we did. All the all the Bills players came in and bought furniture in Orchard Park. <laughs> it's amazing. It's it, you could get snow from like September 15th to May 15th. <laughs> yeah. You can count Absolutely. on it. Absolutely. Yep. I've been there to I'm a Giants fan. So I went to a few games back in the day, but I've seen uh, people took snowmobiles. They had the snowmobile suits on. It was pretty wild to go to the, the rich stadium. <laughs> It's true. It's true. Anyway, my name is uh, Ed Gerton with Seaco Sales, located in sunny Orange Park, Florida. We are an equipment supply company that uh, has uh, frozen dessert equipment, uh, batch freezers, soft serve machines, mixed treat machines. We represent Carpajani there. Also, we have display cases for we represent ESA, BGI, uh, IFE, and GTI Design. And we also have a complete line of frozen drink machines. So anyway, you can reach me at 904-334-4489. Have a good day. Thank good you. Year. Yeah. Uh, let's go with our analytics company, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Analyze this right. group. Yeah. Wrong kind of <laughs> analytics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, good morning and, and happy new year. Uh, I'm Tracy Pumo with Skyline Analytics. We are a full service business intelligence consulting firm. We provide uh, fully customized um, reporting and solutions that give companies enhanced visibility into their financial data uh, so that we help them create actionable business insights, 
um, and increase profitability because they're now making smarter data-driven decisions. Uh, we specialize in data analytics, FP&A consulting, data integration, and process automation. Generally, uh, we support the CFO in their role, so you can kind of think of us as operational and strategic finance support at a sum it up. Um, and uh, we do um, help <clears throat> Gary point of sale systems um, with getting additional financial reporting and helping that integrate and layer on, on top of uh, other reporting systems. Um, we've done quite a bit of that as well with uh, various point of sales that you, you referenced. So uh, thank you. I can be reached at 561-512-1933. Hey, thank you. Uh, Chris, good morning. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the program. My <laughs> name is Chris Kaufman, and primarily recruiting aces for great places. Based out of the Sweet Onion City of Vidalia, Georgia, we do work <laughs> primarily throughout the Southeast United States, primarily in the restaurant industry, helping the human capital be, get increased with those companies looking to increase their talent, whether it be a chef, whether it be a vice president of marketing or a general manager. We uh, work on behalf of the client companies and have practiced this wonderful profession since Monday, April 6th, 1981. And now we're tired of practicing. We're ready to do the real thing. So we uh, also, uh, people say we bring all-star talent. And I so I picked up uh, the telephone number 404 All-Star. That's a great way to reach us, 404 All-Star. And finally, I want to make it real clear. I am not the same Chris Kaufman who's listed on the flight manifest for Epstein's Island. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, Brian, I pity you. You got to follow up. But I want to ask Chris first. Chris, I, I'm reading a lot of articles coming across now that a lot of restaurants are putting in uh, robots to do cooking, and uh, hamburgers, French fries, etc. And uh, one article that popped up oh, this past week was that one of Tesla's robots at the production plant went crazy and attacked a worker. And so I would, the question is, do you think that's going to be affecting your end of the business anytime soon? No, not necessarily, um, but I've dealt with robotic personalities for a lifetime, so, <laughs> and uh, it's another enhancement to uh, the whole operational uh, arena, and it's another mm -hmm. issue that they'll have to be working with and have to be concerned about, so it's like when the restaurant industry went from uh, keeping track of the sales from a cigar box to a cash register, from a cash register to a POS system. You know, it's it's another level of expertise that uh, is supposedly designed to help the restaurant be more efficient. And in many cases, it is. So yeah. it's uh, I've, the companies that embrace technology are the, truly always seem to come out on the leading edge of uh of, of being more secure in their growth and development. Um, look what Chick-fil-A does. They go out to the cars with handheld um, mm -hmm. those Microsoft Surface or they were there and they uh, just can give better level of service than if you pull up to a speaker and there's no picture of anybody and it's just somebody yelling at you and they can't hear you. You can't hear them because but yeah. Chick-fil-A takes it down to a human level and there's a human being you can talk to about the menu and the promotions and the new the new menu items, et cetera. So, but as far as doing the manual work and having a robot do it, if it if it works, that's fabulous. That's great. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think the managers that you hire are going to have to be uh, technologically oriented and be familiar with uh, managing the managers of the technology. Well, Howard, the other day, uh, this lady who works in my company and helps me out, uh, she had her her uh, grandson here 
Uh, he was just out of school. And, and so uh, I picked up my cell phone and I said to him, I said, you know, I, I got to find a um, Bluetooth uh, connection here. And he says to me, uh, go to settings. It'll be in settings. Now, this is a third grader. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, you know, that they're, they're, they're already familiar. Their, their mindset is, you know, technology is part of their life. And, yep, yeah, uh, yeah. It's like when handheld calculators first came out and a friend of mine was teaching. This is back in the 70s. And I said, do the kids understand, you know, that two times 100, you know, is more than a push of a button? He said they may not understand the, the real deep understanding of it, but they know how to get the answer. And that's what they're looking for. You know, they just right. they got the answer right in the palm of their hand. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah uh, it's it's pretty amazing. You know, we're sitting we're sitting at a time in history where yeah. things are changing so quickly. It's a pretty interesting to watch it. Just to quick show you guys, this is a, a total POS system that my company has. It's a, a handheld that has a complete menu on it. It's all touchscreen. It's a printer. It takes Apple Pay, Google Pay, um, all the credit card tap and pay, and I, I'm selling these to the restaurants and they literally are flipping tables like 40% more uh, because of the speed of uh, getting that. They, they, it goes right into the, uh, from the, the handheld right yeah. into the, uh, the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty amazing. So like you were saying, Chris, about technology, that's our company is at the leading edge. Every, everything we get and tell our owners, the engineers are on it the next day. It's pretty well, awesome. That's, all you can say is that's spot on. Yeah. <laughs> and Chris and Gary, to what you're saying, when I went to college, we had slide rules we had to play with and learn how to use the slide rule. They didn't have calculators. That was, you know, George Washington was a, an underclassman to me, by the way. So. <laughs> uh, but but now, then when I was a senior in college, they, Texas Instrument came out with these little TI 50s, or whatever they were. Yeah. And you could multiply and subtract, uh, add and do square roots on it. And I thought I died and went to heaven because it made life so much easier. Yeah. So and, and the slide rule was more powerful because I could do sines and cosines and cubes and everything else. But the calculators are now doing all that and it's far easier. And I don't know how to use a slide rule anymore, <laughs> but I still have one yeah, and up I the mantle. Uh, I'm still trying to sell my Abacus on eBay. <laughs> I got a couple of protractors too. <laughs> protractors. <Yeah. laughs> my my oldest is in pre K, and they're they're integrating iPads already into the classroom. And by the time she hits first grade, they'll have laptops. Wow! Yeah. Dang! I'm saving my protractor for marriage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, Gary, I'll I'll say this though: I own a sheet metal shop. And we gave magnetic protractors to our employees so they could set angles on, on sheet metal. Because, oh, okay, because so you, you would give somebody, say, have to mount two of these at a 22 and a half degree angle off of dead center. You, so you line it up, you get a protractor out there, you can get 22 and a half degrees in about a minute and a half. That's so that, great. And, and we hired employees, who, a lot of them who couldn't read or write, but they learned how to use this equipment. Wow. So it's amazing the the changes in the, the way they operated. So again, it's not that people are dumb; it's just that they're not educated. Yeah. If I could say it Ed, that way. Ed, are you familiar with Load King? Yep. Yeah. So that's one of my big accounts I had uh, that I worked with in my old job, and I also am doing a lot of work with them now currently. Um, have you ever met with them? Yeah, they're 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 almost in the hood, if I can say it that way. Yeah, it's on Down Beaver Street. They are. Of, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, but the, uh, the the it's you know it was the old Winn Dixie building uh, distribution center back in the '40s, and uh, it's absolutely probably one of the most incredible buildings I've ever been in my life. They have uh, close to 200,000 square feet of manufacturing, and um, I just think they do equipment as well. And my old company, I've represented Krem, and we had all the you know all the coffee offerings. So um, I know they're not working with them anymore because Wellbuilt got rid of that, but. If you'd like, I'd love to take you over there sometime and uh, meet with uh, the people and uh, get you in there for equipment. 
Well, I've I've quoted them over the years, equipment, but I got, nothing has ever really come through. So yeah, because they they work with and, a and lot of coffee. Yeah, they and, work and with and a I lot of coffee. Shops. coffee. Yeah. yeah, they have like badass coffee, uh, black rifle coffee. They they got about six or eight coffee chains they work with. Yeah. 15 years ago, they were doing an awful lot of work with the uh, Cold Stone Creamery in, in the Jacksonville area. And mm -hmm. that work all died out because I got involved in the Cold Stone Creamery business because that's ice cream machines. Yeah. But the coffee business, they really, it, it's something that I don't have any lines to that I have. That's it. Okay. You, you have soft like serve? It. Yes, I do. Okay, cool. I met another guy. He, his, he owns the Mox Group. Are you familiar with them? In I am not. They, uh, he's a younger guy. He's like 40, but um, he's he's uh, got these ice cream shops he's opening up throughout Jacksonville, and they specialize in soft serve. I believe his machine's from China, though, so, but it's uh, interesting. <laughs> uh oh <laughs> at, at some point, he'll, he'll be calling it. <laughs> he claimed his research. This is the best in the market, so it's interesting. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, well, you know, as you can see, uh, as we get new people in the group and uh, the amount of uh, experience goes so deep and the experience level is great. I mean, uh, what Baha and Gary bring to the table is, you know, a lot of experience, a lot of connections. So it's great for everybody. So, uh, Terry, why don't you tell us what you do, who you are? Oh, I wanted to hear Brian follow Chris. No, I'm giving, you, giving you that honor today. Oh, no. no. Uh, <laughs> okay, so what me and my crew do are find finding uh, restaurants that are up and coming in Florida and in Georgia on a monthly basis. We, um, we scout them out. We have hundreds of sources that we go through that we, you know, many are, are, are paid. You know, you have to pay to get the licenses and the names and the email addresses of the owners. And we scout these all, you know, for 30 days. We format them. I send them out around the 9th or 10th, except on January, it's about the 15th because of the, the week off for the holidays when we close the office. But what we give you uh, in Florida is... Uh, somewhere between 50 and 70 brand new leads every month. And with that, you get where the building is uh, as far as are they in construction? Are they in planning stages? Are they in demo mode on a ground that's got to be leveled? Um, the name of the establishment, the owner, uh, his email address, phone number, about when it's going to be done. And then there's a little column in the middle for you know, a little extra information that we can put in there. Like he owns several other restaurants, more coming. Um, and there's a lot of stuff coming into Florida. I got to tell you, I'm blown away. And the last few months have been our largest ever. So um, that is what we do. And that is, I take very uh, personal and deep pride in that because we work so hard every month to get those leads out and format it into an Excel spreadsheet so that you can sort them any way you want by zip, city, whatever. Um, and then we keep some of the little bit of the ones now from the prior month that we can get more information on. If they're just breaking ground, a lot of times we can't get that owner's uh, email address or personal phone number or you know, it'll, they haven't found the property yet. Well, if they haven't found the property yet, are they working with somebody or am I going to call somebody from the group and say, Hey, I got this guy looking, you know, trying to figure out where to put his new restaurant. He doesn't know. He doesn't know the geography and the topography of Florida. So, um, and then that's where the leads come in, which is what this group is about. It's not, uh, you know, bring a lead to the group. It's a networking group, a restaurant. Uh, you're all vendors. You're all companies. So do. everybody helps everyone that knows anyone. And we pretty much know everyone <laughs> after 30 years. So any questions, anybody wants a sample lead report, 
please send me an email, terry at trnusa.com, and I'm happy to send you a sample report. Um, now, the leads as of January the 1st went to $8.99 a year. We have a form you can fill out, two payments, um, $4.99 for six months, and then $4.01 after that in the following six months. If you are in the group and you already have signed up, you were grandfathered in. So you do not pay that. So just let me know if you want those leads. Anyways, thank hey. you. How Happy can we, How you want to give it your phone number? I do not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Brian, how do you follow that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But before I get started, I was going to make a comment on what Gary just showed that handheld um, um, uh, computer, whatever, you know, POS system. I, I was back in the late 80s and mid uh, 2000s, I worked for Aloha. And Aloha came out with a handheld product. It was made by Armatron or something. And to give you an idea how technology has advanced, um, so um, it was a secondary product. We Aloha, which was Ibertech, did not develop it, but we bought it. And to give you an idea how things have advanced, is that we put these into some restaurants, but they didn't realize how. You know, some of this stuff did not go to the kitchen because there was a lot of dead spots in the in the restaurants. So you think you sent your order and then you got people complaining, where's my food? It did not make it to the kitchen. And also you weren't able to run credit cards through it at the time. But that gives you an idea how 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 technology has changed. Um, because I can remember uh selling the product and getting a lot of complaints but that was you know you know late 90s and 2000s so but uh yeah that's how how is how that is advanced but um what and who i am i'm out of coming georgia <laughs> i'm further north than chris <laughs> um Where i work for a company called rogue financial group we are a commercial equipment financing company um rogue is part of yes leasing which is out of miami florida We've been around since the late 70s. I work on the hospitality side. And what I do is I, you know, concentrate restaurants, bars, breweries. I do a lot of work with convenience stores. I finance uh, um, equipment. Um, I do commercial equipment financing. Um, it can be from a small project to a large project. We also do a lot of work with startups around the country. And um, again, um, I'm Brian with Rogue Financial Group. I can be reached at 404. 723-7222. And one other thing about, real quick, about you guys in Jacksonville. Um, I'm working with, uh, Chris probably knows who these guys, Clean Plate Restaurants. And um, they're, yeah, I'm in, in talk with them about a project up in Raleigh called Zest. But what they're doing now is they have some, they have about, I guess, 12 or 13 locations but their main focus, they're in um going in the they're in Carolinas, they're in Florida, Georgia, and Arkansas. And they got, I guess, I guess three brands in Jacksonville. One is uh, Lola's, Carmine's, and Moondog. I don't know if you've heard of that or not, but they're gonna be adding trying to add some more to Jacksonville, but they're gonna be opening a couple more in Georgia in the new um city center and coming um they're doing a zest which is a uh asian uh sushi uh, concept up in raleigh so i'm in the works with them trying to um see if i can put some financing together for them um but uh again brian with the rogue financial group hey terry i sent you an email this morning about a restaurant group that's opening up in saint simon's island in, in georgia yeah it may be interesting for the group to hear if you have it handy. Uh yeah, I just closed it. Hold on. That was um 
Yeah, it's right here. It is, um, <clears throat> it's Fresher Brands. Is anyone familiar with Fresher Brands? No. Okay, this is um, Cer um, Cerceros. It's a, a Mexican, uh, you're familiar, Ed? Okay. The founder is Luke Christian, like years ago, but mm -hmm. I have the VP of Franchise Development He's in St. Simon's Islands, and they're oh. opening up on Demir Road. Well, they just opened up, but yeah. they're open other locations. So that one would be for any Jacksonville North up into uh, mm -hmm. Georgia, even northern Georgia. Yeah. If Perry? anyone, is that. yeah, I'll send you Luke's contact. I know who he is. Oh, you do. Yeah, I've talked to him before. They actually they, start. They actually started out in Douglas, in Douglas, Georgia, which is South Georgia, in old South Georgia, and um, they opened up a couple. They opened one in Milledgeville, Georgia. They opened one in Alpharetta. Um, oh, they got, good. They got a couple other cons, uh, a couple other ones open. Um, there, it's it, it's like a spinoff from Moe's, but I got to be honest with you, it's a lot more expensive than Moe's. You know. But I got I got Luke's uh, direct nine, number I can send to you. I'll that send it to everybody. But yeah, they're 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 starting to franchise this stuff out. Well, I have Jake. Do you know Jake? Mm. Jake of Phil Potts? No, I don't know him. He's mm -hmm. the V franchise development. So yes, but if you have that number, send it to me because I have the corporate number and it looks like a cell. But um, send it to me. And if anyone's interested in that, leave, let me know. I'll send it to you. Yeah. Because yeah. there's some franchise all over. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, uh, the difference between them and uh, Moe's is they serve uh, liquor. And, <laughs> yeah. It's just kind of cool. I um, thought it was kind of interesting. That they were opening in St. Simon's. I mean, that's, you know, that's got to be a high end place. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Like you said, it's more than Moe's. And Moe's. You know, I, I'm not crazy about Moe's. Um, being from California, I'm used to authentic Mexican, so it's really hard for me to eat anything but. <laughs> Anyways. Don't, don't get me started. <laughs> hey, you, you, you like bagels with shamir on it. Huh? And, <laughs> <laughs> and I go for the... Um, the nice breaded challah French toast, you know, homemade. So moving right <laughs> along. <laughs> uh, I want to double back to uh, Baha. Baha, you, now that you've seen what we do, uh, if there's anything you might have forgotten or you want to add, and give us uh, a way to contact you. Well, of course, I think I think the contact is is what I forgot there. Um, for the viewers, um, my personal cell is the best way to reach me. Um, I have a 9 a.m., 9 p.m. kind of call hour type of thing. I like to you know, be on call at all times, but it's going to be 585-435-1655. And it's, um, it's, it's cool to see that, you know, we have some Jacksonville, North Florida-esque uh, presence in the group as well. So I'm excited. I forgot to mention... Uh... At the end of this meeting, I will will be sending you and everybody an email with a spreadsheet of information of everybody that's here this morning. So when you get it, if there's anything on your line that is not correct, let me know so that I can correct it or add it in. I might have some some uh, empty lines there. So yeah, I think uh, last week or the, the week before, um, the number on there was like the office number. Um, the 904 one, and uh, my, my personal cell is the best way to reach me. Just send me whatever you want to appear. You got it. Okay. And Gary and Ed keep switching on my board, and I'm looking at this. Wait a second. Wait a second. Gary, <laughs> just yeah. a double I just wanted here. to, what Brian just mentioned about the his old Aloha system. So this handheld here is actually, it's uh, rechargeable and it's cellular. And then also we have uh, what's called the Meraki router, which is also cellular that runs the whole POS system in the restaurant. We also have battery backup for our printers in the expediting printers in the kitchen. So if your power and internet goes out, you can still run your restaurant and process credit cards. So I just wanted to let you know how, how the technology has come so far. You may not be able to cook with the power out, but you'll get all the orders. 
Oh, it's all, it's all about the gas. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sell salads. <laughs> so, Gary, you, you want to just uh, give us a way to contact you? With with the email that you uh, that I got to you, um, that has my information. But my cell is nine zero four six six two seven seven eight eight. And uh, yeah, if Howard, if you could send me uh, that what you mentioned earlier, I'll email everyone. I'd love to get everyone's uh, information. So text, email. It's just uh, everybody sounds it sounds amazing for everything you guys are bringing to the table, and vice versa. I have uh, you know over about ten years of different contacts. I worked with, you know, every, I mean, Ed Don, Trimark, I mean, you name the dealers, I work with them. And um, I was going to ask, Terry, did, uh, do you work with a lot of construction companies to get leads? Because I found that was pretty, pretty good. Construct team. I, um, yeah, I do have a few construction that's companies. Cool. Yeah. It seems like those guys get in the ground level before, oh, you know, yeah. That's what get in. Now, yeah. what you have comes in a little later. But yes, and the yeah. construction companies, um, they're a little hesitant to give out that information. So I go back to licensing. Um, yeah. and into the a lot of the licensing places, you can't get the information. You have to pay for it, unfortunately. But you can get it. And it's I know the areas to go through to get it. But yes, the construct teams are great. Yeah. Uh, and another, I, I used to work with a lot of architects and consultants and stuff. And I'm, I've been reaching out to them because... A lot of the times my old job, they would spec our equipment and then we already got the, you know, that lead in there, you know, unless someone's going to try to swap it out. Right. But um, I, I'm trying to get that relationship to where, you know, all, all of our networking, it's a, you know, just we could have that those suggestions, which I'm doing with Load King and Trimark and Ed Don, you know, you know, spec that equipment in, you know, give us that first chance to get in there and, and educate, you know, and, and, and try to build your businesses. So. It's something I feel we could all all network with too. Would be awesome. I wanted to mention, you know, you you said uh, consultants, etc. Uh, every what we're trying to do now is the last meeting of the month. We're trying to do a combined meeting of the two groups, the nine and the eleven o'clock. And in the eleven o'clock, we've got a, a member who is a kitchen designer. And oh, yeah. a gentleman who was supposed to come today, but he just sent me an email that he's not able to come. He's a restaurateur converted into a restaurant consultant. Who, in fact, his article is on the front page of our newspaper in our January issue. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, cr a lot of synergy between the two groups, and uh, give the opportunity to meet everybody. And I want to encourage everybody. I don't have time to do it today because I, I wanted to do it today, do some breakout rooms. But, but uh, it's real important for people to do one-on-ones. You know, some, some of the people in this group have been there from the beginning. So we, pretty, we know each other pretty well at this point. Uh, but the, people who are coming in, don't know everybody as well as we do. And it's really important to get on the phone and, and do a one-on-one -on -one and get to learn exactly what somebody does. And a perfect example is Gary. Gary comes into this group and he says, I'm selling POS. So everybody says, okay, great. Well, you know, we'll try to, but Gary's got years of experience as a manufacturer's rep. So he knows people many levels down that uh, can help all of us. So it's it's really, really, his experience and my experience are very similar. Uh, we know a lot of people. So it's, it's really interesting to get a one-on-one -on -one and get to know exactly what he does. And uh, if, if you do a one-on-one -on -one with Terry, you'll find that she was a national sales manager for a manufacturer out in California. So her experiences are, you know, are varied. And Brian used to sell POS, and uh, you know, and Ed's an engineer. And you know, there's the things that we don't know about each other just from meeting once a week. So getting to know each other on a personal basis is really important, and really important to the success of the group and you in the group. 
because we want to know what the levels are that you that you have. And Plus, uh, I can spell POS. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Well, I would love to meet just because I'm so close to everyone in Jacksonville. I'd love to maybe grab a coffee with you guys. And um, I'm actually working with one of my coworkers lives in Coconut Creek and I'm heading down there next Thursday night. We oh. have uh, an opportunity with uh, it's called Van Horn Bagels and Deli. And uh, we met with the owner, uh, the founder, his, his grandfather, Hyman Weiss, who was a uh, uh, this guy that was an immigrant came into the Ellis Island years ago in, in the late forties. And he ended up, he was a baker and he ended up uh, working for a guy in Montreal and he was a poker player too. Well, long story short, his grandfather won the first store in a poker game. And uh, now they have uh, 18 and they're building more in Florida, but they also branched out to like 30, a uh, bunch of other states as well. So are they baking um, New York bagels or Montreal bagels? Oh, uh, no, New York style. Yeah, it's all about the, the, the way that they got their claim to fame was the artesian water that they use, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so they have a, the, the, Brook, the Brooklyn Bagel Company is in Florida. Yeah. They, yep, they supposedly there. import the water from New York. Yeah. What part of Florida? Where are you guys at? Are you in South Florida? Yeah, we're in Boca Raton. Okay. My my girlfriend's uh, daughter lives in, uh, she's just moving from uh, Broken Sound and she just got a place uh, right on the boulevard in uh, Atlantic and uh, Delray. So uh -huh. I'm down there quite a bit. So I'd love to meet with you guys when I'm there next. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, actually, I'll, I'll be there, you know, next Friday. So maybe if you guys have a minute, we could meet and you can meet my coworker and just yeah, he's, he's he's got a great he's been with spot on for about four years and he's got a great connection with a ton of people down there great okay. maybe we'll do it after the meeting okay sounds awesome good well, lunchtime. anyhow uh i had some i had some th articles pulled out to discuss today but uh we don't have time uh just so that I'll just quickly tell you that january believe it or not is dry January month, and it's just started in England. They're trying to get people not to drink alcohol in January. All over the world, I can't see it happening, especially in England where it started. But that's the, that was one of the topics that I wanted to bring up. But anyway, I want to thank you all for coming. Uh, uh, welcome to the new people. Uh, hopefully, next week we'll have. A, all of our people here. And uh, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, if you'd like to reach us, give us a call at 561-620-8888. Go to our website at trnusa.com. And our YouTube page is Today's Restaurant. And we've got over 300 videos on that channel. So uh, thank you all for coming. See you next week. Stay yes. safe. And let the sauce be with you. Okay.